Hello everybody, welcome to Cocoon Yoga. This is prenatal yoga with Selena. So before we get started, making sure you have any props that you need to to help pull in and fill space and make you feel comfortable. We are gonna start today on with a little bit of height underneath our sits bones. So I suggest grabbing a blanket like this and just simply folding it up. It could be a towel or a pillow off of your couch or bed as well. And then something like a hard foam block could just simply be a container. And similar with the bolster here, a bunch of rolled up blankets or pillows would do. So bringing that folded up blanket or soft cushion underneath your seat, shimmy your sit bones forward and then here it allows your pelvis, this bowl here, to roll forward giving you this nice tall seat. So this is always available to you if you're ever, if we're ever doing a seated pose and you're feeling like that rounding is coming through your spine that you're finding that today it is a challenge to sit up tall then make sure to grab something and stick it under your sits bones and it will help. All right, let's get started by closing your eyes and tapping into the breath. So as we know, our breath is our anchor. It is our starting place. It is where we pivot. It is our center. Our breath is always with us, always present, always moving like waves lapping up on an ocean beach. And so move that breath through you like those waves. If it's available to you, inhale and exhale through your nose or open your mouth. Big swell in as you inhale, nourishing baby, nourishing your organs, nourishing your muscles. And then long, smooth exhale, shedding away any stress, any toxins, any buildup. And keep this beautiful abundant cycle moving through you as you inhale, Open and swell. And as you exhale, melt and soften. Keep your attention with both in and exhalations. Trying to complete each cycle. Making them full, making them abundant. And I invite you throughout class, if you're feeling a little extra tension or build up stress or weight on you that you just can't release and let go of, I invite you throughout class to find that open mouth exhale. So still breathing in through your nose. Perhaps sighing out long on your exhale though. And the more we do these sweet, sweet out breaths, the more we can help to find that center if it's lost, help to encourage that parasympathetic nervous system to activate that rest and digest state of calm and peacefulness. So remember that simple, simple tool with your breath. <sighs> Finding that release whenever you need it. And that goes outside of class too that you can take with you throughout your day and evening. Big nourishing breaths in, long sighs out. Three more slow, nourishing cycles. Take your time. Really try and complete each inhale and each exhale. Pushing it deep down into your belly. And 
finishing that last cycle. When you're ready, gently opening your eyes. Okay, if you're on a cushion or prop, I'm gonna get you to move that out to the side for now. And then scooping the left leg underneath the right, coming into Sukhasana, easy pose. So here you can use your uh, hands on your knees to help roll you forward, sitting up nice and tall, achieving that stacking. That's what we want with that nice straight spine. All right, walking your right fingers out to the right. Inhale, sweep up nice and tall, and then exhale, find a side stretch. Don't go so far that your left sit bone is lifting up though. We wanna make sure both sit bones are still grounded and rooting here into the ground equally. Good, and then on your next inhale, coming up through center, exhale, reach across to your right knee now, so crossing over the body. Hold on there as you inhale up with the right arm, and then exhale to find that sweet side stretch. So whether you're in your first, second, or third trimester, these side stretches can be really beautiful, helping to open up and create space for your organs and for baby. Good, inhale to rise through center. Exhale, crossing over now, grabbing a hold of both knees and then around your spine. So now we're looking for that beautiful rounding like that angry cat back. Let your head hang really heavy in between your arms. Tune into your next inhale and come up through center. Unwinding your arms, tent your fingers behind you, find that sweet, sweet heart lift, which is essentially just squeezing your shoulder blades to your spine. Lovely. And coming to sit up nice and tall. Okay, let's swap the leg. So right leg now goes under left. Walking the left fingers out to the left. Inhale, sweep. Exhale. Find your stretch. Find that sweet spot for you. So especially if you are further along in your pregnancy, second and third trimesters, we're really going to be checking and tuning in all the time with how does this feel? How is the intensity level? You shouldn't be looking for like a seven out of 10. We're more looking for like a four or five out of 10. Okay, inhale to rise. Exhale, cross over, grab a hold of the left knee, anchor. Inhale up, you got it. And exhale, side. Mm, opening up. Even after you have your babies, these beautiful side stretches feel so good. Help realign and shift everything back into place. <sighs> Inhale to rise. And then exhale, cross over, round your spine, drop your head, let there be no tension in your neck, do an out breath if you need it. <sighs> Feels so good, right? Okay, tune into your inhale. And as you ascend, unravel your arms, tense your fingers behind you, and find your heart lift. All right, good. Let's extend the legs out long, giving the legs a little shake out, a little beat out, waking up the hips, waking up the legs and the joints. Okay, finding staff pose. So if you want, you can remove the flesh out of the way of the sit bones. Sitting up nice and tall, we are trying to achieve this L shape with our body, stacking ears over shoulder, shoulders over hips. So you're really gonna have to roll the pelvis forward. Now, if belly is a little bit more bountiful, widen your stance. They don't have to be right in front. Always modify to what you need that suits you and baby best in that moment, okay? So sitting up as tall as you can here. We're gonna bend into the left knee, grab a hold of the bottom of the foot, and then grab a hold of the left knee. And so here we're just gonna to start to rock back and forth. This, this pose is called rock the baby, which I think is really funny. Um, and so we're just doing circles with the knee. And we're getting into that hip joint, which is, it's a ball and socket joint, so it kind of has a lot of mobility in this hip joint and you're just warming it up okay and if you want to intensify that stretch you can always feel free to grab um to put your foot up in the crook of your elbow instead of grabbing a hold and then that will intensify the stretch and so just checking in what do you need right now remember there's no competition even with what you did last week always checking in nurturing yourself your body which also helps to nurture baby. How does this feel? <sighs> All right. 
We're gonna take that left leg now and draw it over top of the right leg. So draw it over top and attempt to stack the knees. Now they might not get stacked today or ever, and that's okay. We're just gonna attempt to draw it over as far as we can. So again, nice stretch in through the hip joint there. And then when you're at your edge, you just let that knee on the top, just let it hang heavy, let it fall towards the bottom leg. Check your alignment. Can you still find a little bit of height in your seat? And if you need to here, use your fingertips as a prop behind you, extending your arms long behind you. Lift your heart up, really flex into your right toes. Breathe. Two more breaths. Slowly start to unwind. Give those legs a little windshield wiper action. And we'll do the opposite side. So starting in staff pose, sitting up nice and tall to start. Okay, now bend into the right knee, grab a hold of the foot, grab a hold of the knee, and here we're just gonna start to rotate that leg. And again, if you want to juicify it, putting the foot up into the crook of your left elbow. Okay, and that will intensify the stretch a little bit. Tuning in, checking in. It may have felt good to do that on one side and the other side, you're like, mm -mm, not happening, that's okay. Our bodies are not symmetrical, and so you may find a shift from one side to the other. Just go with it. <laughs> Celebrate what your body's doing right now because hey, your body's creating life right now. That's pretty amazing. So there's always gotta be a celebration, even if you see a limitation. See that as a celebration. <sighs> All right, one more swivel around. And then grabbing a hold of that foot and the knee, we're gonna draw the leg over top of the bottom leg, over top of the left, draw it over as far as you can. And then when you get to your edge, settle the leg down on top of the bottom. Okay, are you still sitting up nice and tall? So roll your pelvis, it starts from your uh, core here, your center down here, roll your pelvis up, and then the stacking will happen. Imagine that string pulling you up from the crown of your head. And if you can hang out here with your hands on your knees, or if you want, use the arms as a prop behind you. Find a heart lift, squeeze your shoulder blades to your spine. Breathe nice, deep, nourishing breaths. One last breath cycle. Mm, modify. Remember, my cues are just suggestions, so if something I'm cueing doesn't feel good, then don't do it or modify. Okay, let's shimmy out of this. Give those legs one last little windshield wiper. And we're gonna swivel the feet around and come on to kneeling. Shimmy those behind you. And we're gonna come up to kneeling, double up your mat, pull in your props if you need to under your knees. I don't want the joints to not be supported here, so making sure that it's comfortable to come up to kneeling. All right, interlace your fingers behind your head. I'll show you from behind, okay? Interlace your fingers behind your head, and then take a big inhale. Kneeling up nice and tall, right, right up through the crown of your head, and then drop your right elbow. See if you can get your head into the crook of your left elbow here, okay? and then pressing your head, sometimes the head shifts and you're kind of all of a sudden you're gazing down. S press the back of your head into the left elbow here, into the left arm, and see if you can realign with ears over shoulders, shoulders over knees. Yeah, now if this doesn't feel good and you're like, ah, I just don't like pressing my head into my arm, just simply take your right hand and draw your elbow back. We're just getting a big stretch in the shoulder joint here. So the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint as well, same as the hips, so lots of mobility, which is why a lot of injuries happen in the shoulders and the hips. So take big breath. Tune into your next inhale and slowly rise through center. And then your exhale will drop the left elbow. See if you can get your head into the crook of your right elbow, right arm and check your alignment, press your head into that arm, opening up this shoulder joint here, really expansive opening. Hmm. 
And just notice if you can breathe. If you can't take a breath, then you're too deep. That intensity level is too high. One more big nourishing breath. And slowly on your inhale, start to rise and take those hands to the back of your head to tuck your chin into your head, uh, into your chest. That would be weird. Chin into your chest and allow your head to come forward. So your shoulders are still stacked up over your hips. Hips are over your knees. Good. Check, check, check. And then let your elbows hang heavy. Just let them be floppy. Let them draw towards one another to allow the gravity here and the weight of your arms to allow your head to come forward and allow that tra traction, that little bit of opening to occur in between the vertebrae of the spine. Good. Beautiful. All right, on your next inhale, slowly coming back up and you can release your arms down. All right, take your feet together, knees wide. We're gonna come back into our frog um, squat. Now we're not gonna be here for long, but if you are over 35 weeks and you know baby is breech right now, we don't encourage you to do deep squatting at this point because we don't wanna encourage baby to descend if baby's not in the optimal position at 35 weeks and beyond. So in that case, I'm gonna get you to come up into half squat, okay? So it's not super deep, bum shooting behind you and elbows on, um, on your knees. And then you can do the twist part if you want to. All right, otherwise, bringing the feet together, maybe the heels, maybe the toe mounds, whatever feels good. Knees nice and wide. And then we're gonna plant the left arm so the side of the arm is touching the inside of the left leg. Okay, press that hand firmly into the ground, and as you inhale, sweep your right arm up for a twist. Now, fingers can reach up towards the sky, or if you want to, you can reach your hand behind your back and bring it around to kind of tuck into the nook of your hip crease on the left hip there. Coming into a bind, whatever feels good for you. One more breath. Mmm, lovely. Okay, slowly unravel, bringing that top arm back down. Plant your right hand now so that the right arm is hugging the inside of the right leg. And then inhale, raise up tall. And if you want to, staying, reaching up to the sky or reach your hand behind and bring it around in front to the right leg or right hip crease. Keep breathing. Can you take a breath here, making sure it's still available? <sighs> Lovely. All right, slowly unravel yourself. And if your feet are together, widen them. We're gonna rag doll up to standing. So bum comes up first, let your arms hang, let your head hang, let there be no tension in your neck. Nice soft knees as you rag doll up and up and all the way up to standing. And then we're gonna to come to the top of your mat and find mountain. So you know there's lots of cues in mountain posts, and especially in pregnancy, and especially as you approach that later third trimester where belly's becoming more bountiful, we wanna make sure the hips don't thrust forward, compensating for baby out front, because that will change our whole alignment, and you will end up with this S-shaped body in postpartum, and it just makes a lot longer of a recovery. So. Stack ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over heels, okay? And then all four corners rooted into the ground of your feet. Really important, so don't just put the weight in your heels. All right, then blossom your bum to get rid of as many creases in your pants as you can. Blossom your bum. Chin remains parallel to the floor, and then I like to open up my hands, open up the heart, and feel how maybe this is a departure from where you normally stand perhaps. And if you can get more expansion in your breath because of it. So just these little cues, check, 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 can help as you approach term, as you approach the more bountiful stages in the third trimester. We want to make sure that mountain pose is happening outside of yoga class, not just in yoga class. And we have this nice tall alignment. Okay. So I'm going to show you from the side now from mountain, take your hands to your hips and take a big giant step back with the right leg. Big, big step back. So we're doing warrior two. So I want you to pivot your back foot parallel to the back of your mat and then inhale, open your arms out front to back 
exhale, settle into that front knee and navigate that foot, shift it around so that the heel is stacked right underneath the knee. Okay, reach your fingers, plug your shoulders into their sockets and breathe. Hug your leg bones towards one another, connecting to your center, your core, your mummy strong. All right, if you want to just hang out here in warrior two, you can, or do bow and arrow with me. So as you inhale, back arm comes forward. Exhale, pull it back like a strong warrior. Mm -hmm. Good. Inhale, go at your own pace. You don't have to follow my rate and my rhythm because that's my breath. That's when I need to move, when I need to breathe in and out. Essentially, it's an inhale to come forward and an exhale to draw back. There's no wrong way to do this. So just have fun with it. Explore, play, be curious, be compassionate with yourself. <laughs> One more. Good. Coming back, meeting up in warrior two. Cool, take your hands to your hips. Let's pivot on the heels, facing now the side of your mat. Plie your toes out and keeping this nice neutral spine that you have standing up nice and tall right here, keeping that as you take a gentle squat down. It doesn't have to be super deep, okay? I want you to still feel that integration of your inner thighs hugging towards the center line. Okay, I want you to access that because that connects to your strong core, your transversus abdominis. Okay, checking, checking, knees and toes going in the same direction, yes, good. And then when you're ready, arms come out and bend at the elbows, palms facing one another. Open up your elbows, shine your heart up. That fire starting to build up in the thighs, in the foundation, that's on purpose, that's okay. Breathe to where you're feeling resistance. <sighs> Long out breath if you're feeling like you need that added release. All right, let's start to flow. So on your inhale, you're gonna straighten the legs, bring your arms up overhead, reach up tall, and then exhale right back down into goddess. <sighs> Maybe a centimeter deeper. Inhale. Exhale, maybe an inch deeper. All right, keep going. We're gonna do one more. Meeting back up in Goddess when you're done. Taking your hands to your hips, straighten those legs, pivot your front toe forward and hop that back foot up to meet at the top, shake, 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 shake. Okay, I'm gonna show you from the other side now. So at the top of your mat, once again, find your mountain pose, palms facing forward, checking all your cues, alignment, blossomings happening. Good, standing up nice and tall, take one big breath in, one big breath out. And take your hands to your hips. We're gonna take that giant step plunge right back into our warrior legs. So making sure that back foot is parallel to the back of your mat, baby belly facing the side of your mat. Inhale, open up like you're surfing. Exhale, settle into your front knee. Settle in just enough so that it's stacked over top of the heel. You don't want the knee tracking over the toe, that won't protect your joints. And right now, if relaxin's moving, right now relaxin is moving through your body, which open up your joints making them looser as you prepare for birth. And so we don't want to aggravate that. So making sure everything is stacked, hug your leg bones towards one another. And as you inhale, bow and arrow, coming forward with that back hand. What kind of warrior are you? Are you a Viking princess? I'd totally be a Viking. <laughs> Last one. Meeting back up in warrior two. All right, straighten the front leg, take the hands to the hips, pivot on your heels to face the side of your mat. Plie your toes out, keeping that nice spine as you find your gentle squat. So just making sure the tail didn't tuck, making sure that the belly's not splaying too far forward. It's nice and neutral with the rib cage stacked right over top of the pelvis. Okay, checking feet and toes are going in the same direction. Inhale, bring your arms up and exhale. You can bring the palms together. Find your goddess shining your heart up. Seeing that fire that's building in your legs, seeing that as a good thing. 
So we want strong foundation as you prepare for birth. We don't need strong six packs. We don't need strong a lot of things, but we do need strong foundation in preparation for your birth, okay? All right, flowing with me when you're ready, if you want to. As you inhale, raise up, overhead. Exhale, come right back down. Can you come a little deeper? Inhale, still feel that integration in between your legs as if the bones are a magnet drawing them towards one another. Yeah. One more, and we'll meet back up in Goddess. Ready? Awesome. Take your hands to your hips, straighten your legs, pivot your front foot forward and hop that back foot up. Give it a little shake out and take a stroll to the back of your mat now. So whether you're in your first, second or third trimester, always making sure you're getting up off the ground through squat as we did that nice, beautiful ragdoll squat to stand and always making sure you're getting onto the floor through squat. All right. So you can just do a little genie squat. It's kind of fun on the way to the floor and we're gonna come into tabletop. So just sway, sway the hips back and forth. Nice, okay. And then coming back in through your center, take your gaze around your right shoulder and take your right hip as if your a string is kind of cinching your hip towards your shoulder on the right side. And come back through center. Take a gaze over your left shoulder and imagine a string cinching up your left hip towards your left shoulder there. Hmm. Awesome, and back, back through center. All right, walk your hands back, back, back. We're gonna sweep the feet around and find staff pose once again. So winding down now. I'm gonna come into that a big juicy stretch in through the hip. Going to give you some options though to make sure it feels good for you back at home. So find staff pose, making that L shape with your body, stacking ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Flex your toes to engage your legs. Good. All right, bending into your left knee now. We're going to take the outside edge of the left foot and place it on top of the thigh. So we're coming into seated figure four. So the outside edge of the foot is nice and flexed so that we don't get this, again, this. Um, deterioration in the ankle joint. We want to make sure everything is nice and strong. And if you want to stay here and you can use your arms as a prop behind you, you can. Or if you want to juicify it and come into a little bit more of a stretch in through your hip joint, bend into your right knee. Find that sweet spot for you and you'll know once you hit it because <laughs> for most people hips are pretty tight. We do a lot of sitting in chairs all day and so therefore hips become pretty tight. And once you found that sweet spot, Lift your heart, squeeze your shoulders to your spine. <sighs> Can you still breathe? Checking in, checking in. How does that feel? I'm gonna scooch out of it a bit. That's a bit intense for me. Yeah, keep your heart lifted. Always honor where you're at. Never comparing. Always moving into each shape and pose with compassion for yourself. Giving yourself these permissions to be who you are in each moment. It's practice for motherhood. Yes, one more breath. And slowly, slowly release that leg out long to find your staff pose once again. You can give it a little shake. Set yourself, sitting up tall. Bending in now to the right knee, making sure the right foot is nice and flexed. Place it on top of the left thigh. And then just checking in, do you just want to stay here? Does this feel good? Letting that right knee be heavy. Or resting back into your hands, bend into your left knee until you find a big juicy stretch in through the hip, or maybe even you're feeling it through the bum or through the leg. It's all good, wherever you're feeling it. And then once you've met that edge, lift your heart and allow your shoulder blades to kind of kiss your spine. Imagine your collarbones widening. Oh, hello, Jasper. He's woken up from his slumber. <laughs> Can you breathe? Good. We'll do one more breath here. And when you're ready, 
slowly start to release. One last windshield wiper. Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so we're gonna make our way down for Shavasana now. And uh, feel free to pull in these props that you have around you. I don't have too many contraindications for Shavasana. Well, if you wanna lay on your side, right or left, right, lay on your right or left side. If you wanna lay on your back, lay on your back. Um, the only co main contraindication I have is to not do a reverse sit up to get down. So when you flex your six pack, remember I said we don't need strong six packs when we're pregnant. When you flex your six pack, you put this intra-abdominal pressure on this area and the fascia, that interconnective tissue that connects the center line uh, will become weakened. And there's more on the YouTube channel if you want more description about diastasis recti. So just make sure instead you're rolling onto your side to make your way down, okay? And that involves getting in and out of bed as well. So I'm gonna get you to just come into a comfortable position. If you wanna hop on up to a couch or a bed, you can. You know, if you wanna get comfy in your jammies for your Shavasana, you can. I'm gonna stay seated. So wherever you are, trying to find as much relief and softening in your muscles as possible. And so that involves closing the eyes. Keep the breath flowing, nice, equal, long cycles in and out. And then you can do a body scan starting from your forehead, from that center, your third eye. Start to scan or start to melt if you're a visual person and you like the idea of like a melting candle, like wax dripping down the side and that's kind of like how your muscles are melting away from the bones. You can use that as a visual. But essentially you're just scanning, scanning through your face. We do hold a lot of tension in the face. So making sure that you explore all those deep pockets within your physical body, perhaps places you've never thought to bring attention to, like behind your eyeballs <laughs> or around the corners of your eyes. What about your tongue? Your tongue is a huge muscle. Can you let that hang heavy? Sometimes we have a tendency if we're nervous to push our tongue behind our teeth. Can you let that hang heavy in the back of your throat? And scanning through your jaw, making sure your jaw is soft all the way up through to your cheeks and temples. If you want to, you can scan through your scalp, through the sides and the back and the top of your head. And just taking that visual of melting down the sides of your neck, through your throat. And scanning through your shoulders and down your arms, scanning around your joints, through to your hands. Can you allow each finger to be heavy wherever they're resting? Allow them to be grounded. No tension there. Scanning through your chest and back, through your tummy in the space that holds baby, allowing all the muscles in the tummy, the six pack and the lower tummy muscles of the core to be soft and open. And can you take this exploration into your bits? So into the area of your pelvic floor, those muscles that sit at the base of your pelvis. And descend deeper below into your vagina. A lot of tension is usually held in our vaginas throughout the day. And so can you find a little bit of opening and release? And when you do, that you'll find the anus wants to soften and release too. Great. 
Allow this area of your bits to be completely open. Exploring further down through your hip joints and down your legs. Over your knees and through your calves. Over your feet and each one of your toes. Staying there with your breath, staying focused on your anchor with the physical body completely settled, completely soft and grounded. And take four more slow, nourishing breaths. Bringing in peace, bringing in light, bringing in surrender and trust. And when you're ready, if you want to, starting to find slight movement in your fingers and toes. And if you're on your back, rolling over onto your side. And from there, using your strong arm muscles to ragdoll your way up into a tall seat. Keep your eyes closed if you can here. Making your way up. Thank you so much for sharing this practice and this time with me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.